What's going on y'all? Today I'm going to show you how I built this Imperial Shield Array Bunker for Star Wars Legions and more gaming. So my first task in this build was a layout. So scale was one thing I was concerned with. And the doorway was the first thing I was gonna make. And I wanted to make sure that units could fit under the bunker. So I pinpointed some points, yeah. And drew some lines, you know. Cut it out with the world's shittiest knife known to man. At this point, I wasn't exactly sure if it was even going to come out, but I got lucky and it did. The next step after I got the doorway cut out was to build to make it 3D. So the little inside wall with the control panels and where Han and them hide in Return of the Jedi. I wanted to make that. I used a piece of microchip from an old remote controller and some guitar string to make some cords to the panel. Glued them all together and then I cut the door out and put it on. Now I also had to angle this back and that took quite a few tries. That way the front of the bunker had a slope like it does in the film. And I really wanted to match that on authenticity. After that it was steps of cocktail stirs, straws, whatever you want to call them. And I used the little coffee stir sticks to space them out perfectly, even, as best I could. You know, nothing's even when you're scratch building it, but it was tedious, but a lot of fun. I did enjoy it. The little knob in the door uh, was some kind of bottle cap or plastic cap or something. Can't exactly remember, but it ended up being perfect. After I cut it and sanded it down, the door has two hinges and it closes on that center point. And so I wanted to give the illusion using two sticks doubled up that this was a double pane door. Now I'm not really sure what you call the sticks on the outside. I guess reinforced armor plating. Or maybe it was just structural integrity for the concrete and steel for the bunker. However, after a few tedious clicks and snips and a little bit of hot glue, everything was in place and the door looked great. I do say so myself, of course. That is personal opinions. The next step was spray painting it, and oh my god. I had this shitty white paint that I used with a little bit of good black paint to make, and a little bit of blue to make the gray that you kind of see in Star Wars, and it was awful. It was terrible, terrible white paint, and it almost ruined everything. But I can save it with some good looking terrain. I used foam core to cut out train and that only took one try I promise and then I used my foam insulation board that I buy at Lowe's 
and I started blocking up where I was going to put the rocks. And I left the bunker in there, that way I could slide it out and cut this thing down with my hot wire cutter. And not have to worry about damaging the bunker any more than I absolutely had to. Even with all those cautious steps and planning it all out, it still was a bitch to get at. It was tight and almost broke it. You know what they say, there is no do, there's only try. Is that maybe Yoder? This is part of me laying out my terrain. I wanted to have a ramp up on the right side. That way units could get up top and use the high ground. Hashtag Obi Wan Kenobi. And then I used my hot wire cutter to stride the rocks and give them that nice limestone erosion look. That's what I've seen my whole life. It's just something I'm used to. So I like it. Looks good, I think. It always turns out looking pretty decent. You might think different, but uh, I enjoy it. And I have some few big gaps where the blocks of foam went together, but I just try my best to use a utility knife and blend all that shit in. That way it doesn't look too bad. Then I wanted to add some more greeblies on the bunker. And looking at pictures online, I noticed they had some kind of turret or sensor or something on top. I'm not exactly sure what it is. But um, yeah, I used one of those little apple juice squeezy things that my toddlers eat. And some 2mm HD foam from SKS Props. And I used a little screwdriver and riveted the foam. And made the little thingy. I thought it turned out pretty good. Also wanted to add some more 3D to the top. So used the 2mm foam again super glued it on there and use my little Phillips head screwdriver to make little rivets and a couple little weld lines around it and I figured after I used my hair dryer and tightened the foam up a little bit they'd be more profound and then I sprayed those with that same horrible horrible paint all over again The next step was to paint the door because I knew once I sealed this thing into the mountainside that it was going to be a bitch to not get copperish brown paint all over everything. So I decided to make it easy on myself. Paint it before it goes in. Stupid. That's how you do it. Now the fun part. So this is ceramic tile mortar. It's uh, for flooring mortar. Um, it's not grout. It is mortar. There's a difference mortar you can do a lot with I enjoy it grout won't set up right if it's not the exact consistency that it needs to be but mortar can be a little runny or a little thick and it's still gonna set up I like to get mine at peanut butter consistency and if it doesn't fall off my little scoop for 30 seconds or more then it's good to go like I said peanut butter like thick creamy peanut butter that's that's kind of like then you spread it on there like you're making a birthday cake for your best friend, I guess. All sloppy and don't really care, but it's the sentimental thought that counts. Don't be afraid to get in there, but unlike me, use gloves. The shit causes cancer, and I'm not joking. It's really cool, too, because you can use all kinds of different tools to get different looks. It makes for wonderful mud. Naughty little it looks so good. I don't know why. It just does.
So this is my Mupu. It's black mod, black paint and Mod Podge. Uh, this is what I seal my terrain with. It seals the foam. That way it doesn't soak up all my paint. And I'm very generous with this first coat. Um, only, yeah, yeah. Just be real generous with it, and then after it dries quite a bit, you can go in with a smaller brush and get into the cracks and crevices that you can't get with a big fat brush like that one. But a mop brush, a mop brush works really good, or any brush. I, you know, I'm not picky about my brushes. I like all brushes, shapes, sizes, and colors. It's a baby cricket. I tried to save him, but he didn't want it saved. And after I scooped him, he just jumped off on my shirt. But I didn't want to paint him. as you see I use a little brush to get down in there and now we enter the long haul of many layers of paint I always start with a darker brown but not too dark because you don't want it to really blend in too much with the black that black's gonna highlight your shadows and then after I do my first coat of brown I normally come in and lighten it up a little bit with some white paint or yellow This is, uh, I always dry brush my, my rocks, like the stone, because same thing with the, the mud, I like the black shadows to be really profound and stand out. I think it gives it depth and makes it look better than what it actually is. And then just dry brush on the slightest bit of white, it's gonna highlight the edges. And dry brush on like a really dry tan color makes it look like areas that you know doesn't have much vegetation and then the green I use it to highlight where I'm going to put my flocking that way the flocking just looks better on green I think that's a personal opinion but anyways to all you new people checking out my video and my content I hope you're enjoying it, and if you have any tips, please leave them in the comments. And for all of you that have subscribed, I'm pouring one out for you. Cheers, friends. The last step's pretty simple. I just use black paint and water, really diluted, and I weather it. And every time you weather something, no matter how many times you do it, it's just going to look better and better. I don't think you can overweather something. And then a little bit of flocking. Which is always so fun. It's satisfying to see the little tiny grass go on. I use sticky tacky for my glue. It holds pretty well, but I'm sure there's stuff going to fall off. This is going to be actually played on, so doubt it'll look the same in a year or two but hey it's all part of it it's fun to always make more that right there is a professional static grass applicator you can only buy those at supermarkets just to let you know and then me and my son went out and grabbed some sticks he held the flashlight for dad for the first time you know, just give it. I always like to put a little moss, like a little flocking on my sticks. Makes them look like big logs. And then I soak it in all the brushes, bushes, sorry, in isopropyl alcohol. And spritz them with watered down Mod Podge mix in the world's shittiest sprayer. And that was it. I didn't want to add anymore. I didn't think I could add anymore. And I didn't want to overdo it. So yeah. I always like to film it before it dries anyways.
so that's it i hope you all liked it be sure to subscribe if you haven't hit the like button share it to all your friends and your wargaming buddies and we'll see y'all on the other end of the trail